Hi everybody. Oh, we're making a squeaky noise. Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. This video is actually going to be part of a few clips because it's going to be an ongoing situation. Right now at this moment in time, it's the very beginning of this journey I suppose. So basically I want to talk about um, contraception. So if you're not into this video, you don't want to hear about my lady area, then skip a video there's plenty on this channel yeah i am in my pajamas at the moment this is kind of just my first initial feeling i suppose of the situation so basically five years ago or coming up to five years ago i just had elsa in september in, in the september five years ago and we had to make a decision on contraception like you normally do after having a baby you have your six week checkup and they ask you what you want to do with contraception so i'm actually a little tiny quick snippet of background i'm actually kind of allergic to hormone contraceptions so we decided after Elsa to try the coil. I went with the Mirena coil, the Marina coil, because I suffered with really heavy, like really heavy periods and really painful periods and that is said to help with that. Whereas the copper coil can actually make it worse. So I didn't want that because it was obviously at its worst. I had it fitted, it didn't hurt really, it just feels like a slight scratch I suppose on the in on your insides as it inserts into your cervix and that was it it's now five years I have had a generally good experience with the Mirena coil as it for the first six months I did bleed a lot not a lot it was actually like spotting but I bled for six months entirely which was really really annoying and then it just settled down and my periods were like every three months every four months sometimes um sometimes every month it was really kind of sporadic I'm actually going to lift up the camera a little bit because I feel like we're really low here I just never knew when I was going to come on but then it kind of in the past 18 months or so so you have it for five years it's got like a five year sell by date or something and for the past 18 months they have settled down to be a monthly really regular actually i'm only bleeding for about three days and it's very little but it was coming up to the time to have it removed which is what this all video is about i went for my appointment last night had a smear done i've had various swabs done over the past like 10 years of me being a parent it's just kind of it doesn't phase me that sort of stuff anymore i know that people get quite nervous about that and expose themselves on what do they wear and should they be shaved should they not be shaved you know all that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me that kind of stuff but for some reason i felt really nervous last night but i kind of tried to just relax when i was in the waiting room i was just like you know what it's going to be what it's going to be you're just going to take it out it might hurt it might not hurt i might bleed i might not bleed let's just get it over and done with so then i was in there had my blood pressure done which was actually low funny enough it's always low anyway but i expected it to kind of be normal went in opened up my legs she was having a little fiddle in there as they do they put the speculum thing which is like the scariest thing ever um inside and then she had a look and she said i can't see your threads so the morena coil i'll try and insert a photo here so you can have a look at one and when you have it inserted they can trim the threads which i believe now is what happened to my one because i'm small i think i remember the nurse or the doctor doing it before and saying let's trim them a little bit shorter so that my husband can't feel them that kind of stuff sorry this is so too much information nurse last night she couldn't find my threads which are used to be able to pull the coil out and i was like right okay then like trying to stay calm she then disappeared leaving me with this speculum is that speculum spec this thing hanging out i was just laying there like oh no and so she went to try and find what's called i think a serve a uh, coil extractor which apparently looks like the thing she was describing it as the stick that you get with dates i have never seen that in my life so don't know but i'm, I'm assuming it's something with like a little tool on the end that they can hook in and pull things out they didn't have one in the doctor's surgery which i was a bit of like oh dear why don't they have one so she said i oh, know let's try a smear swab brush they could not find one of those in the doctor's surgery either and then i said to her right if you can't get this out and you can't find it what what's going to happen because obviously i was there to have it replaced as well because it was coming up to the date where you're meant to have it removed she said that it is going to end up being an ultrasound and a trip to see a gynecologist she had that one more look and just said i can't see them I, she said i can't see the threads i can't feel the threads she said if i could feel the threads and see the threads then she would suggest that I come back once she had the correct tools 
and try again but she said because she can't see them or feel them she wants me to go and have an ultrasound to find out where it was and or is and then have a gynecology appointment in my mind and i said it to her well i'm not pregnant so it's got to be in there somewhere doing its job so she said that possibly it might have just gone in further and that's why they can't see it and i've since done research that says the threads can get tangled up inside your cervix and stuff not tangled up but you know pushed up and hiding away hoping that's all that's done but right now because i've done the, my research about like how do you get a coil removed if you can't find it which never do a doctor google because it's like you're gonna die basically everything says you're gonna die and i do feel this is why i'm filming this now is that i feel really nervous about it because i thought i was going in to have it removed and put back in it never occurred to me that she wouldn't be able to find it so i feel really worried actually about it i've got no issues about the ultrasound it's I'm not worried about that but it's that whole if they've found it and it's too far up it possibly could be surgery to remove it and when you do that it's there's like i think it's called a histoscopy so not a hysterectomy because that's when you remove everything but like a his, his hysteroscopy something like that that is basically where they're like opening up the cervix and going inside and removing it which could take like five minutes, it could take an hour. And it could mean a general anaesthetic, it could mean a local anaesthetic. So it's all these like maybes and I do feel very nervous about it now. Oh, and also the complications from that. So apparently if you have the anaesthetic, local or general, there's more risk of them damaging your womb or your cervix. And then obviously that can lead to complications or you need to be on antibiotics or a hospital stay and all these things which seem to see seems so drastic I'm, I'm finished having children so i'm not overly worried about damaging my womb in terms that i don't want any more children so i don't need it to be functioning but what what does that mean I mean, like health wise i just periods and and stuff like that and my sex life i do feel and i've got a bit teary which i'm trying not to, i just don't know how i feel about what might happen because i don't know any more any more than what i was told that i'm just going to go for an ultrasound and speak to a gynecologist so hopefully i'm just going to go they're going to ultrasound me they're going to find it and they're going to go yeah it's easy let's put our own tools that are probably more equipped than a gp surgery in the hospital it'll be more equipped hopefully and she'll just hook it up there and pull it out and that'll be it and then replace it but yeah i just feel a bit like i don't know what's going to happen this is being filmed um currently in the end of november so I'm assuming it's going to take a few weeks for me to get the appointment, so you're, but you will be seeing this together. Just excuse the chaos going on behind me. I've got prayer um, behind me. Basically, I want to update you. So a couple of days ago, I went and had the ultrasound at my doctor's, actually, on my lady areas. It was one of those internal ones, so I was like, oh, no. They asked you to fill your bladder, basically, beforehand, just in case it was like an over-the-stomach ultrasound but it wasn't it was an internal so i went and had to go for a wee and all that they've located the coil which is brilliant obviously however now i don't really know what's going to happen i've been referred for a gynecologist appointment which is there that you're meant to then be taken out i've got a two month waiting list at least so i need to kind of get this sorted out beforehand so i'm going to speak to my doctor next week and find out how they're going to remove it basically um so that's the update i'm feeling much more positive because obviously it's 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 there and it's apparently it's in a really really good position and it's my ovaries looking very fertile and it's clear that the hormone of the marina has worn out basically which I'm, I'm it needs to come out basically so i'll update you again in the next clip um as to what happens next hi everybody um this is the last section of this video because i'm pleased to say my coil has been retrieved and replaced it was i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sit here and lie today when i went in i've literally kind of just got back from the doctors now and i won't lie it was horrific <laughs> the experience of it was horrific but basically i can't remember what i last said a gynecologist appointment was going to be for like months so i decided to allow the doctor to have another go and um, with the correct tools when i got there she was like i've got an array of tools let's just get this done i was really worried that it was going to be really painful and it was <laughs> when she said i can see the threads i was like yes and she was like yes we've got it we've got i can see them and then there was like a moment where she was like 
I can't hold, can't grab hold of them, like with her little tools. Um, and I was like, oh, for goodness sake, can't we just get this bloody thing out of me? And it, But that bit wasn't bad, like when she was feeling around and when it came out, it didn't really hurt. It just felt like, I suppose, a little a poke, basically. A little bit of a sharp poke, but not really sharp. And that bit was fine, but it was the putting it back in that hurt the most. She said that my cervix was very um, narrow, so she had to use a dilator thing i don't know what that is i don't probably want to know what that is but basically she was prizing my cervix open like having a baby so if you've had a baby before you know that hurts and it just felt like really really bad period cramps i'm assuming you've had a period if you're on this video if you haven't and you're a man then you have no idea um, but it felt like real cramping down there um really really painful I have to admit, it was probably the worst period of pain that I've ever felt. I think the whole procedure took about 15 minutes. She then had to measure my womb or something to make sure that she could get the Mirena coil back in. And then eventually, after all the pain, it was in. She kept saying to me, are you okay? I was like, yes, because in my head I was just thinking, I just want this done. Like, I don't want to have to come back and do this again. I just want her to get it in. She started off with doing my blood pressure, which was 117 over um, 76, which my blood pressure is always a little bit low anyway, but that's kind of normal. And then afterwards she did it and it was 130 over 86, so it had gone up, um, which is probably the highest blood pressure I've ever had. And I actually went a bit shaky, like my legs were shaking, my arms were shaking. Um, and she said, are you okay? And I, I, I felt fine. She said, oh, do I feel faint, dizzy, you know, sick or anything? And I didn't. But she wanted me to wait a couple of minutes just to make sure that I wasn't going to faint because I had to walk home on my own. And I walked home on my own and had hubby on the phone the whole time. And obviously I'm here and I'm fine. I have a pad in because there was a bit of bleeding. I haven't been to the toilet since. I'm a little bit scared too. Yeah, there's slight bleeding and I, that's to be expected basically and I'll probably have some period cramps for a day or two. I need to go for a checkup in, well, after my next period, whenever that will be. And I am going to end this video here for you. You don't want to hear any more from me. Um, on this topic, I'm just thrilled that it's back in to be honest, and I didn't have to go and see a gynecologist and I didn't have to have surgery or anything like that. So yeah, I now have the quill in there for five years and that's it. It is a really good form of contraception, I promise. It's been really good for my period. Yeah, it's just, I've had a really bad experience with the getting it out and back in again, replacing it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Good luck if you're watching this because of your own experiences and i hope to see you again in the next one i promise it's not normally this too much information it's normally parenting or travel or weekend vlogs so i hope if you like that please do subscribe because i'd love to have you here thank you goodbye